let's add a registration pop-up or modal to this bubble app. I have my uh, header menu bar here and the beginnings of a home page. And so I would like something to happen when a user clicks sign up. So in my bubble app, I'm going to uh, drag in a pop-up and we should rename this register. Then so that it's a little bit neater inside. Um, I'm using the new responsive engine. So everything I do is built with uh, responsivity for my app in mind. Uh, responsiveness, that's the word. Um, so this is going to be a column and uh, I'm just gonna put 30 pixels of padding around each side. Um, Right, what does my registration flow need? Well, at the bare minimum, it needs uh, email address and password, but I'm also gonna do a name field. Um, so uh, I'm gonna drag in an input here. And uh, again, building with responsiveness in mind, uh, I'm gonna set all of these to be 100%. So that's 100% of the inside of the element that uh, is containing them. Um, let's apply a nice gap in between each of them. So. Uh, right, for email, no, let's go name first, for name. So uh, let's say first name. Uh, so first name is a text element, I can leave it as it is. Uh, I might decide to limit the characters. Um, there we go. Uh, and all of those other options are good. So I'm just gonna copy and paste this. And you can do that with the keyboard shortcuts you saw on the screen or using the edit menu up here. Um, and so this one is gonna be email. Now I'm gonna change the content format to email. That way Bubble will cleverly reject any content that doesn't match the formatting of an email. For example, having an at symbol somewhere in the middle followed by um, you know, like a domain name at hotmail.com or, or anything like that at the end. Uh, so that's my email. Let's rename my placeholder. There we go. And copy and paste that again. And then this one is password. And Bobble can do the same thing uh, with password. There's a number of behind the scenes, uh, like you could do password uh, verification or confirmation. Um, but one of the main things uh, when considering the content format is that password will ensure that the text uh, appears as the, the circles, you know, obscured rather than um, as text on the screen. Uh, so that's all good. And then I need a button for the user to click afterwards. So again, button is going to be made with 100%. And uh, let's call this uh, sign up. Okay, so the workflow. Let's go back to the very beginning. First workflow is display the pop-up. So clicking on my sign up button, uh, I then go uh, edit, create new workflow, and then element actions show pop-up. That's all I need to do there. Uh, using the element tree here, I'm gonna focus back on my pop-up. Um, and I'm a stickler for things to be neat and tidy. There we go. Um, my button, start edit workflow. So this is an account action and it is sign the user up. Uh, and then I just match up the field. So the email address goes in there, password goes in there. Okay, and then I have to add a field. Um, so I'm creating a new field, we'll call this first name, um, in order to store additional content uh, in the database type of user. Um, and so then I just match this up again. So this is input first name. Um, and then I want to hide the pop-up. Uh, so that is an element action, hide. And so that will sign my user up. Uh, and once they're signed up, they're automatically logged in. You don't have to follow step one with uh, a login um, workflow. No, signing up logs the user in. I uh, just thought there's one thing that I've missed here. Uh, I want to ensure that these fields are not empty. Okay, and let's preview that. So click sign up. Okay, and I get uh, this pop-up. Let's add in one more step, actually, that's gonna make this a really, we, we wanna be making our apps so easy for our users to use. Um, and here's something that you can do to improve that. So when the pop-up is shown, let's put the blinking cursor 
into the first field, which is first name. So I go set focus first name. And we're just, we're being really helpful to our users. We're removing a step. There you go, it's ready to go. So I can put in Matt and then um, Matt demo at planet no code.com, put in a password, sign up. Okay, and there you go, I'm signed up. Now, how can we, when we're developing, last thing I'm gonna show you in this video, um, when we're developing, how can we know whether a user is signed in or not? Well, a really easy way, um, if I just find somewhere in my app here, is to go um, current user is logged in, and this will return a yes or a no. Okay, so they are logged in, even though I've refreshed the page because of browser cookies. Like it remembers that I'm a user and that I'm logged in. Um, if, they want, if you want them to log out, we'll cover that in another um, video, but it, it's just a, a workflow process, again, using the, um, in fact, if I'll show you. Uh, so if you wanted to sign the user out, obviously you wouldn't put it in this workflow, that makes no sense. Uh, there you go, log the user out is in the actions, uh, log the user out. Um, but for now, they're gonna remain logged in um, for, for at least a good few days, uh, depending on how you've got cookies set up with your app. Um, if you've got any uh, other suggestions or comments um, for videos, please leave them in the comments section below. Uh, we love to get feedback uh, and it helps us guide the sort of videos that we'll be creating in the future.